Live. Hey everyone out there, it's Carl Craig Martin. We're gonna we're gonna let the the audience build for a minute or two um, as we get going here, because uh, we certainly want to make sure we we get enough people online so that we can provide information to you. Um, if you're on the line, please uh, just let us know who you are, what unit you're from, uh, where you might be calling in from, and uh, and uh, you can certainly start putting in your questions now if you want. Uh, and we'll have uh, one of our teammates here capturing those. So we, after we get done uh, with our portion, we can uh, re relate to those questions and answer them as best we can. So we'll hang on for about a minute or so. But thank you. Tony's up from housing is here. He's asking for an audio check, please. <laughs> 26. <clears throat> DES is on. Good stuff. You ready to go? I think we can. I think we can too. Cool. All right. We ready, Amanda? Yep. Got yeah, thirty. We're good. Okay. All right. Hi, I'm I'm Carl Craig Martin. I'm the new Garrison Commander here at Fort Hamilton, New York. Uh, happy to be with you today, and uh, with my battle buddy here. I'm Sergeant Major Michael McCabe. Glad to be here as well. Here, sir. Cool. So uh, we have a, a bunch of information we want to share with our community, uh, our teammates here on Fort Hamilton, as well as our greater community. Uh, certainly, our families that live here on post, uh, the employees across the garrison, and if anybody's out there uh, in the greater uh, Bay Ridge or Bensonhurst or Brooklyn area, uh, we, we'd love to hear from you as well uh, if you have questions about what's going on here on Fort Hamilton. Uh, we have a number of our teammates dialed in as well, so you know, uh, ask the questions you you really need to know the answers to, and we'll do the best we can to provide those answers to you either now uh, in the middle of this or towards the end. And uh, if not, then we'll, we'll capture them and we'll post this online. I do want to say up front that this is a Facebook Live event, and we want to uh, keep this live uh, for this effort. However, the good news is we also have this being recorded on YouTube as well. And so after we're done with this, we'll post the video on YouTube so you can go back and, and watch the, the video if you have a, to catch up on some of the questions or you wanna go back and share that with someone else. Um, there's a bunch of stuff we wanna talk about. The first thing I wanna just reiterate uh, from the garrison is our vision. Uh, it, here at Fort Hamilton, we're a professional team that provides quality services for our community and enables su su success of our mission partners while strengthening the foundation of our Army culture. Uh, I want to highlight there that we start and end with people. Uh, it, in my personal opinion and how we approach uh, all our efforts here on Fort Hamilton, uh, we will focus on people first. Uh, and I believe truly that if you do that, then uh, everything else will be successful, whether it's the individual, whether it's the team, whether it's the community. Uh, so up front, I want to highlight that. Uh, the second thing is, uh, because we want to focus on people, we want to do more events like this. So there'll be live updates uh, as well as video recordings that we'll be doing uh, throughout the next couple of years here on Fort Hamilton. Uh, we'll venture outside the realm of, of my office here in the Garrison headquarters and show you some of the great uh, locations we have here on Fort Hamilton. It really is a beautiful post and it is historic and there's a lot we want to share with you throughout this time. Uh, beyond that, uh, you won't always hear from myself or uh, you may hear from the CSM 
or just from him uh, or a number of other teammates. I know uh, Mr. Tony Mercante from our housing office is also doing recordings uh, because we want to share with you a number of important pieces that regard uh, our families and their uh, housing situation. So we want to share that as well. So uh, as we go forward, uh, please continue to tune into Facebook and please continue to check our YouTube video, uh, YouTube page and, and like and share with other uh, members of our community as well. Uh, we'll also have uh, open lines of communication uh, on this website, uh, on Facebook and on our YouTube page. And uh, our public affairs officer, Amanda Hay, has also posted uh, an open link so that you can uh, ask questions and reach out to the command if you have something you want to share or ask. Um, we're here to serve you uh, as our, our community and we want to make sure that uh, you know that and that we can reach you as many ways as we can. So uh, after that, first thing I definitely want to highlight is uh, where we are with COVID-19. So as you know, it, it is still around us. It is still occurring in our country. And uh, I believe uh, Mayor uh, de Blasio posted today that our numbers are about 0.24 across New York City, which is fantastic news for our community. But the key there is that we remain vigilant. Uh, I know many of you know someone or, or personally have had uh, uh, a period of time where COVID-19 impacted your life. And, uh, and sometimes that can be a terrible or tragic situation. And we certainly don't wanna have that reoccur here on Fort Hamilton or in Brooklyn or in New York. It, it's a terrible situation. And so we need to remain vigilant. We need to make sure we continue to social distance. We need to make sure that we continue to wear our masks in public. Uh, I have been out and about, and you know sometimes people are not wearing their masks the way they should. Uh, please ensure that you cover your whole face, include your nose, uh, because if you're only doing partial, then you're not really achieving the purpose of wearing your mask. Um, social distance as much as possible, uh, only gather in small groups, uh, and continue to gather outside as much as possible, not in small confined spaces, which is one of the major reasons they believe COVID impacted New York City so greatly. Uh, we remain at HPCon Bravo here on the installation, and we will continue to stay in that HPCon for a while. We are uh, specifically looking at and already have uh, made some changes across the installation. The pool is open, as many of you know, and uh, we have recently opened up uh, a couple of more of our MWR facilities, starting with the Physical Fitness Center. Uh, we have opened that up to our retirees uh, for a particular time so that they can have access uh, to the gym. Uh, we've also opened up our bowling alley uh, for and it's been open for food service, but we've also opened it up uh, with every other lane. Uh, we ask that you make reservations uh, when you come there, uh, but you can't bowl if you wear a mask. And uh, so that is also opened up. And uh, you may have seen in the in the news that New York City will uh, have uh, museums open up. So we're going to be looking to open up our museum here on the installation, and then we may expand the patronage. Uh, for our bowling center to our, include our, our community partners. So that's something I wanted to say up front. Uh, bottom line though is remain vigilant. This is not over with. Uh, until we have a vaccine and we can be sure we're safe, uh, we cannot guarantee that COVID will not come back to our community. Uh, I do want to then now turn it back over to uh, my partner here, Sergeant Major McCabe. We'll discuss a new topic here we want to share, uh, which is our digital garrison app. Thank you, sir. Um, hello, everyone. Um, just wanted to uh, see if anybody has ever walked around, looked up, tried to find the hours or any anything on the installation and didn't get an answer and then thought, man, there should be an app for that. Well, guess what? There is. It's called the uh, Digital Garrison. So uh, we encourage, uh, it's, it's brand new, opened up uh, basically this month. The Army and APES kind of teamed up, partnered together and, and designed this app. And currently there are 62 installations uh, that you can customize yourself within your app. So download it onto your phone and that's what we're asking. We're encouraging that everyone here uh, download Digital Garrison and please register. Uh, the, big, the big thing there is you have to register through this application so you can customize and bring Fort Hamilton to, to your specific app. 
Um, and in this way, this is a one-stop shop and it basically anything dealing with any of our installation services, uh, you can find, uh, find, that find those answers within the app. It's a, it's a great opportunity. Uh, pretty soon, I think within the next couple months, they're going to bring the commissary and housing. Currently, they're not in the app right now, but it is coming soon. So, uh, so please look out for that. Please download it. You never know if I'm walking around and, and I stop you. I may just ask uh, to see if it's on your on your phone, and, uh, and who knows, you might even get something out of it if it's downloaded. So uh, please do that. And looking forward to seeing you out on the streets, sir. Back Thanks, to you. Sir, Major. And importantly, if there's something you want to see on that app, please let us know by providing feedback to the command on how we can better improve that application. Uh, it, it is a, a great attempt by the Army to put everything in one place so we can have a, a single resource for all the things we need to know about Fort Hamilton. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is uh, housing. Quality of life matters and our families matter. And uh, although COVID has certainly been the focus of this command uh, and the, the Army uh, across the board, housing still remains the number one priority for installation management. We understand that we still have issues and concerns that we need to address and that no matter what, we need to take care of our people. And that is certainly why I highlight uh, at the beginning of this uh, how important our people and our families and our community are. Uh, right now, uh, we are uh, in a particularly uh, wonderful situation where we received notice a couple weeks ago uh, that uh, our partners in our LLC, which is Balfour Beatty, uh, along with the Fort Hamilton Garrison, received a $15 million, uh, what they call an Uber, which is a funding supplement to allow Fort Hamilton to uh, update and uh, take care of a lot of the housing issues that we have across our installation. So $15 million will go a long way in ensuring that we can uh, take care of uh, critical things, uh, particularly in our Double Day Village, housing area and then some other areas along uh, upper and, and lower ocean view. We want to make sure that uh, our families are safe, uh, we want to make sure our families are happy, we want to make sure that the homes uh, provide uh, a comfortable living environment uh, with the resources you need to take care of you and yours. And so uh, right now we're working on the final questions with our partner Balfour Beatty to submit up to the Army staff. And once that's received, uh, here in the near future, in a couple months, we'll likely begin uh, initial uh, layout. And you'll start to see uh, contractors and, and those types of folks out working in our community to start beginning those improvements. Uh, you may have already seen that uh, we have uh, renovations going on in, in Building 201, which is our historic Colonel's Row. Uh, they have to mitigate some lead paint there and uh, also update some of the external features of that building due to its age. Uh, additionally, uh, we have a stairwell being repaired uh, that we want to make sure provides safety for our families there and although they have been uh, temporarily displaced, uh, we'll get them back into their homes uh, about the first week of September. Uh, the Army uh, also wants to ensure that we are tracking the, the safety and the well-being of our housing and so I just want uh, and our families in the housing so I, I do want to highlight uh, that uh, our command team here every week sits down and has a teleconference with our higher headquarters uh, as well as the installation management command commanding general and that's how seriously we take housing uh, it is not it has not fallen off our radar because of COVID and uh, we will continue to engage the community to try and make this the best and, and happiest place to live. Uh, given how wonderful New York City is, we want to make sure that, that Fort Hamilton can match that and, and we have a comfortable environment. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is something new, but something I'm sure you're all familiar with. Uh, there's no doubt that Fort Hamilton in New York City is, is a diverse place. And the Army does not have a diversity problem. The Army is a wonderful reflection of the American citizen and the American population. What we do want to work on is something called inclusion or inclusivity. Uh, now, I will tell you right away that my position is that I support it, 
But I also know that it's not just something that Craig Martin can say, we're gonna do it this way and it's gonna be better. I realize who I am and I realize who my teammates are and I wanna make sure that I leverage and we leverage our diverse population here on the garrison to create a more inclusive environment. I will be meeting with the members of my staff here on Friday to begin discussions on how we can create panels and communicate the needs of our teammates across the garrison to create a more inclusive environment. Uh, we are definitely in the first steps of trying to do this, and I would ask you, please, please, uh, provide uh, feedback to our Equal Opportunity Office uh, as we begin to build the panels to get after this requirement and this need. And then later on, please participate in these panels because we want to maximize participation to really, frankly, 100%. Uh, everybody matters on this team. And because we are diverse, we matter in different ways that make this a better and stronger team. And I want to make sure we're cohesive and that we provide opportunities for everyone and that we don't just select certain people uh, in ways that we have traditionally in the past. So how can we shape or break and recreate systems and processes that are definitely more inclusive for our teammates? So more to come on that. Sar Major, over to you. Well, thank you, sir. Um, well, Commander and I, we want to give a, a huge shout out to our, uh, our, our workers of BBC, our mission partners, and, uh, and of course the base, safe, the base ops contractors for the, the readiness, the preparation, and then of course the cleanup after our tropical storm last week. They did a great job. Uh, we just ask that everyone please bear with us. Uh, it's not done yet. Um, a lot of it has been done. and. Uh, but there are still, you know, uh, there, there are still some tree branches, limbs, so on and so forth, laying on the ground. Uh, but please, please bear with us. It, it, it's still being done. Slowly but surely, it's going to get done. Um, the next thing I want to ask is, again, uh, please bear with us. I know it's uh, a little bit of an inconvenience, but right now, 7th, uh, 7th Street Gate is currently closed. and um, But the renovations are only making... Uh, our, our installation more secure. So right now we're asking uh, that you use the poly prep gate. Currently it's, uh, it's open Monday through Friday um, from, what were the hours? From so zero, 06 to 1800. To 1800, yeah. roger. Um, so inbound only, of course it is open for pedestrian traffic as well, uh, in and out. Uh, but again, again, the safety of, of, of everyone for Fort Hamilton is of our concern. So again, uh, that, that project is going to go on until uh, approximately October. So please bear with us, and uh, again, it's for you. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, um, which is dealing with uh, FMWR, uh, lots of different events uh, that are coming up, and uh, for you, uh, the bowling center, as the colonel uh, brought up earlier, the, the, the bowling center is currently open right now, Monday through Friday, from 07 to 1530. And as the city opens up, if they open up their bowling alleys, uh, we'll, we'll determine whether or not when we're going to open up, if it's going to be any later than that. But currently, Monday through Friday, from 07 to 1530. And of course, they also have breakfast and lunch as well. So come on out, get some good food. I've tried it. It is pretty darn good. So... Um, as well, next thing would be Friday, the 21st. Great event, the, chap, uh, the, the chaplain uh, and, and his team are putting on a scavenger hunt uh, this Friday, the 21st from, from 10.30 until 12 o'clock uh, in the afternoon, and it'll end at the community club with lunch, again, provided by the chaplain and his team. Um, the ages for the kids would be uh, all the way up to age 12, I believe, uh, it stops there. So. Um, but it's going to be a great event. We ask that you know try to bring as many people as you can out to that event. It's going to be a great event. I think they're looking for their best pirates and scalawags yes. to, to come dressed uh, <laughs> properly for a true scavenger hunt. This is true. Thank you, sir. Cool. Um, the 28th, the 28th, um, MWR is hosting a free double feature uh, movie out on the bluff there. So starting at, at um, 20 hundred hours 8 p.m. they're going to start off with a, a kid-friendly movie and that's going to be Jumanji the next level and then it'll be followed up by more of an adult film uh, Bad Boys for Life so may, may not be uh, great for the young ones 
But again, it's a double feature and the great thing is it's all free. Okay, so please come on out. Um, the bar will be open, I, I believe. So uh, it will. Yes. So, uh, but anyway, come on out. Great event, especially if it's free, right? Uh, am I saying if it's free, it's for me. So anyway, um, uh, also with MWR, beginning August 31st, uh, CYS will be expanding their hours from 0630 to 1730. Uh, in addition to that, they're also going to have um, preschool. Uh, it's called Kinder Readiness. And that also for ages three to five, that will be available as well uh, from those same hours, 0630 to 1730. Um, the Colonel and I, we are teaming up for this next event coming in September from the 4th of September to the 25th of September. Um, two person teams, uh, come on out and play some cornhole, okay? Three weeks of, of uh, this, the, the season, and then it'll end with a week of the, the finals. First and second place will get, um, uh, will receive some type of, I don't even know what, what it is. So, that, but there are gonna be some gifts for uh, first and second uh, prizes. prizes. We teamed That's up well. because otherwise we would have been first and second place. <laughs> exactly. So, I know you got a better game than us, so come on out and give us a challenge. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, last thing, um, so September 10th, September 10th is going to be our 9-11 commemorative observance, okay? Um, it's going to be another, another great event. This event will be held uh, virtually, so we ask that, you know, um, normally, you know, before COVID, and it's, it's a great event, and we're sorry that we can't invite everybody. But um, please, please uh, get online and, and view this event. It's gonna be just as good. It's just unfortunate that you're gonna have to view it from, from online. Um, but that'll be at, uh, on Facebook the 10th of September at 1100 hours. Uh, other than that, I think uh, I'm done, sir. All right, sorry, mate. Appreciate it. Well, we, we're gonna take some questions now. So uh, I, I think our team here has tried to capture as much as they can. Keep sending your questions in, uh, and, and as our major likes to say, we're here to serve you. So, if there's a way we can do that, uh, then please let us know. So, uh, I'll reiterate that the recording will be on YouTube after this, on our Port Hamilton YouTube channel, and uh, you can look us up then. And if we don't get to your questions today, then then please shoot them to our points of contact on those uh, channels, and we'll get back to you. So, all right. Okay, so first question, is the post open to guests? And if so, what's the procedure now? Is the post open to guests? So that question was from a resident. Yeah, so, so the same procedure pre-COVID. Oh. Yeah, we are allowing people to have guests in their homes if they're residents or if they're renting. Okay, so the answer is yes, we are, but we need to make sure that uh, those guests uh, follow proper COVID rules. Uh, if those guests are coming in from out of town, uh, we, we will continue to follow both New York State and New York City COVID requirements. So I need you to keep that in mind. Uh, if they're flying in or driving in, then they need to follow the 14-day the quarantine requirement so that uh, those are still in place. Uh, if there's someone that you know that are going to come on post here from the city uh, and they're just coming to your residence, then they'll certainly come in if the, either escort or they'll be checked in through our visitor center. Okay, next question. Uh, are active duty soldiers required to wear masks while working out? Uh, while working out. So, okay, when entering the facility, yes. When walking around from upstairs to downstairs, yes. You're also required when you come into the building, use your CAT card to uh, scan in. There's also uh, sanitation right there, whether they're wipes or whether it's hand sanitizer, you're, re you're required to use that before you go into the facility. Once you get onto a machine and actually conduct cardio or your actual workout, you can actually remove your mask at that time. But I ask again, um, I mean, you literally have less than a minute once you leave a machine to please go and get the sanitizing wipes, wipe down your machine, um, and then you know move on to the, to the next thing. When moving from one to the next, you'll put your mask back on, 
and, uh, and so on and so forth. But anyway, again, I've instructed the staff there that if someone does not sanitize their machine when they're done using it, they will be asked to leave. So please be cognizant of that. COVID is a real thing and we just want to make sure that we keep it contained. Yeah, the so, physical fitness center is, is the highest risk location on post right now for, for our, our community. And we can't place our, our community at risk uh, through not, not caring or not being uh, focused on uh, remaining vigilant. And I know those of you who utilize the gym certainly want to use it. So, you know, it, it should be you that lead the way on making sure that we uphold the standard and follow uh, the, the points that the command sergeant major made. So please continue to do that. Generally speaking, we've, we've had a really good uh, effort by our team here uh, and you and the community to follow these rules. And so uh, we haven't had any cases, we don't think, that has come out of uh, the physical fitness center. We wanna leave it open and we certainly in the future will continue to look at expanded patronage and the ability to uh, use the gym to its fullest capacity. So, uh, good question, and, and thanks for following the rules. Uh, next question: Will the gym be open on Sundays? So, so cur currently, uh, the gym is not open on Sundays uh, due to the low amount of usage on the weekends. It's uh, normally doesn't uh, exceed an average of about thirty people. Okay. Uh, so it's cost prohibitive at this point. Okay. So right now the gym will remain closed on Sundays. Uh, I know there may be some people out there that want to use it, uh, but to date uh, we've had a low showing uh, of personnel utilizing the facility, uh, which makes it difficult for us to keep it open. Uh, if you feel strongly about using the gym on Sundays and there's more than one of you out there in our community, please let us know uh, and we'll, we'll reevaluate that as we go. It's nothing. Nothing that is COVID related that's beyond health and safety is, is a fixed case. And, and we will try and do our best to uh, make sure that we're addressing the needs of our community while also remaining safe and, and certainly vigilant with, with the PPE, the protective equipment that we must wear, masks and gloves and, and using the hand sanitizer as much as possible. Okay. Next question: um, Can housing power wash some double day buildings that have been that have not been renovated? I, I will have to speak with our, our housing partner on that. Uh, I understand the desire to do that. If it's a health issue, then we can certainly get on that quicker than than may be possible. Uh, however, uh, please keep in mind, as I mentioned earlier, that we do have uh, a fifteen million dollar uh, amount that's going to come to. Uh, get after uh, 10 of, uh, so we renovated three of those buildings and we're going to renovate the remaining 10. If it's one of those three buildings that's already been renovated, then we certainly need to look at that. If it's one of the other 10, uh, then your, your building is going to be renovated soon. And one of those, uh, one of the key components of that renovation is a complete replacement of the exterior building. Uh, so the outside, including the layers underneath uh, the paneling on the outside, the siding, will be replaced as well. Uh, okay, next is, can you talk about the dress code for working out at the fitness center, please? Sorry, Major, dress code. <laughs> dress code. Okay, so uh, currently uh, I'm not changing anything from my predecessor. If you are, uh, if you are military, you will wear your prescribed fitness uniform uh, during PT hours up to uh, 0, 0800 hours. After that, and it, um, you know, I think at nine o'clock they close and, it, and it's, uh, a deep clean is done. After that, it, it's civilian close af after that. I will, I will remain keeping your physical fitness, prescribed physical fitness uniform. And a as some people have already known, I, I have made corrections already. So um, little things, you know, within our regulations, what we're authorized to wear, we will remain that way, so no, no change. And, and I would add, you know, we're soldiers and, and we may have, you know, Marines and, and sailors and Coast Guardsmen and police officers who use that gym. Uh, but, you know, I'd, I'd ask you to look at this in a positive way and take pride in the uniform you wear. And your like PT that. uniform is a uniform. And, you know, you should be able to put that black army PT shirt on in the morning and be proud of being a soldier. And that's the way I'd ask you to look at it. I certainly do. 
uh, and I certainly enjoy getting out and wearing my PT uniform uh, to work out. So uh, we'll continue to do that for the time being. Next question, is it possible to clearly mark buildings with building numbers? Uh, I'll have to take a look at that. If, if the, the, the person asking the question as to which building is a concern uh, or numbers of buildings that are a concern, uh, we can go around and check on that. I, I, I have not noticed that, but uh, you know, we, we can possibly achieve some, uh, some signage, acquire some signage and place that. Uh, and if they could elaborate, is that buildings that are in the housing area or is that buildings on the installation such as the PX and the commissary? It's a fire issue as well, so we'd appreciate any notice as to where those are so that we can yes. get our fire folks. So good point from one of our teammates here is, you know, it, we certainly want to be able to identify buildings uh, if there's a fire concern. As you know, uh, the, the New York Fire Department comes on post and they need to go to that building. Now I know they have maps, but we need to make sure we can identify what that building is in a quick manner. So if, if the signage is being blocked by vegetation or it's in a location, it's difficult to see that's also a concern and we'll want to fix that okay another question the new metal stairs that have been installed in housing are deteriorating visibly and pool water can anything be done uh, if you can let us know which one we'll, we'll come right out and take a look at it and i'd ask you also to use the work order format uh, that our balfour Beatty partners have to fix that problem and if they're not responsive then you can certainly let our uh, Port Hamilton Housing uh, Coordinator, Mr. Tony Mercante, know, and he can help, uh, as well as myself, uh, act as a liaison with our partners to ensure that's getting taken care of. But that should be able to be fixed. Uh, no more questions. Okay. Well, if there's no more questions, uh, that doesn't mean you have to stop now. If you think of one later on, again, as I mentioned, you can contact us. The links are on the, the YouTube video page, as well as the Facebook page, as well as our Fort Hamilton community page. Send us a note, uh, let us know how we're doing. It can be a comment, doesn't have to just be a question, uh, to, to help us see ourselves better. Uh, Sergeant Major and I get out as much as we can, and I know our teammates do too, but new eyes or different eyes can certainly see something different that we don't capture, and we wanna make sure that we have uh, the best community for the military here in New York City. Sorry, Major, do you have anything else you want to say? I just want to echo those same comments, uh, the same thing, so I won't say the same thing. What I will say is um, we're here for you. That's exactly what I mean. We have everyone that works uh, on Fort Hamilton, and all, we're jo all our job is is to make your life better here on Fort Hamilton. If we can do it, we will definitely try. We do want to say, you know, if you see something, say something. You know, that's, Absolutely. that's exactly what we want. If you see something, please bring it up. Uh, however, through whatever chain, uh, up to us. And again, I have an open door. Anybody can come and talk to me at any time. Um, and talk to Pauline. She'll be at, there to greet you when you, when you walk into our office. Uh, but by all means, come and see me and stress whatever is on your, on your mind. Um, but again, uh, we're happy to be here. And uh, thanks for listening in. Uh, we will do this quite often. So uh, thank you very much. Yeah. We're glad you could tune in. And I hope you all have a great day and a great week. And we'll be coming in uh, and doing this more often. So please spread the word to your families and friends and our community. And we hope we can expand our audience and keep everyone as informed as possible. Take care. Thank you.